Yay, we are live. I have a little, I'm going to stay right here uh, in my little, um, you know, in my studio here. We've been having a little technical difficulties, but we are here now. As you guys are joining, say hello. Let me know that you're there. Let me know you're with me. Um, and I'm just going to give you guys a second to hop on. A second, a second to hop on and share this where I said I would. Boop, 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 boop. Hey, Michelle, how are you? How's it going? Happy Thursday. Where are you tuning in from? Do tell. I'm going 15 in a 30. I'm in no hurry. I'm gonna take it slow, just as fast as I can. Bum bum bum, bum bum bum. All right. If you're watching the replay, let me know. Say replay, love, and um, we're going to get going here. We blah, blah, blah. I just make sure we're all good. All right. All right, you guys. So we have been, I okay, so uh, if you don't know me, I am Amanda, your intuitive nutrition and energy coach. I help you eat intuitively and eat for energy uh, so that you don't have to give a second thought to food and you can use that energy that we create to build a life that you love. Um, whatever that may mean to you. I also explore the spiritual and emotional sides of nourishment. As a nutrition intuitive, I can channel the needs of your nourishment body and look into stagnant emotion and stuck energy in your organs. So as you guys are jumping on, say hello. Let me know you're here. Let me know how the other energy building basic tips have been working out for you. What have you done with water and vegetables? and um, optimizing digestion. Tell me in the comments below. I want to hear how it's going for you. And I want to know that, um, you know, we're not just talking about it, that we're actually putting it into practice. So Energy Building Basics is the series this week that we're doing <clears throat> in order to uh, have a quick tip a day, a simple thing to implement each day. Because normally, especially around this time of year with New Year's resolutions and goals and whatnot, um, there are plenty of things out there in our daily life and our daily habits that um, we do or substances that we take in or energy that we, um, energy that we take in that drain us, right? But what I find is that when we stop focusing on the things we want to release, right, I don't... Uh, I don't want to have sugar, I don't want to have caffeine, I don't want to have sweets, I don't want to have candy, I don't want to have pizza. When we stop focusing on those things and turn our focus to what we are replacing it with, to what we are adding in, to what those new and good habits are, um, a little bit of magic happens and and those things kind of start following away, falling away naturally and we start to find ourselves with these um, with these new healthier habits and it's amazing. Michelle says, I've been having more hot water with lemon since it's so cold. Ooh, yay, that's awesome. I do that every morning, looking for my mug. It's over there. Um, uh, and that's a great way to get to A, wake up your digestion, B, get a shot of vitamin C right in the morning and start to get hydrated right away. Uh, I love it. Where are you, Michelle, that it's so cold? I am in, at the moment, I am in Ohio, and it is definitely cold here, although the sun is out, as you can tell, so that makes it a little, a little lot uh, better. Uh, I love that solar energy. So anyway, 
we are actually doing these things over this week, not just talking about it because the value is in the experience. I love helping people come into their body and actually experience these things um, because oftentimes we think just because we intellectually know about it, um, you know, I know this to be true, that that's enough. Um, but the value is in the experience. The value is in trying it and in experimenting. So we did day one. Um, tell me how you guys have been doing with day one was water and hydration and Michelle saying, you know, she's been staying hydrated with warm lemon water and tea, herbal teas are another great way to stay hydrated in the cold. Soups are another great way to stay hydrated in the cold. Then we talked about, uh, vegetables. We had uh, longer training about vegetables cause you guys had a lot to say about it. And I love that. And, and ways to get more and um, ways to try new ones and things like that. And th how important they are for our health. And then yesterday we talked about optimizing digestion and we had a lot of different ideas about ways to do that. So now we're on day four and we're gonna talk kind of about two sides of the same coin and that is uh, sleep and movement. So body movement and sleep both super important in um in our life in our health in our daily everything helps us do everything that we do um drop a comment let me know how your sleep is how many hours of sleep you guys are getting um and how and how refreshed do you feel in the morning do you wake up with energy do you wake up feeling well rested let me know uh, because oftentimes, if we don't sleep well, we don't feel like moving our bodies. We don't feel like doing a workout. And sometimes, if we don't move our bodies enough, we don't we don't sleep well, right? So these are kind of two sides of the same coin. So I'm going to talk about both of them in one go here. But sleep, super important. You know, I'll, I'll buzz through um, some of the stuff that you already know. And as you're jumping on, say hello. So sleep is so important. It helps us do everything that we do. It helps us kind of reset all of our bodily functions. Um, and it's, it's important both on the physical, emotional, and spiritual side. And I'll talk about those. Um, but here on the physical, right, it's, it's good for all of, our, all of our bodily functions, especially our heart, especially our heart. It's going to reduce, like getting enough sleep is going to reduce the risk of things like stroke and diabetes and heart disease. Um, it helps the heart and the blood vessels do everything that it does. I have a lot of trouble falling asleep. My mind keeps me awake for an hour, usually after I lay down. Um, Michelle says, yes. So we'll talk about that. Starting to move more, but really looking for solutions. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Um, I have a few... Uh, because I've definitely been there where the mind is just going and it's the only thing the body's tired, but the mind is the thing that's keeping you awake. And before I forget to say it later, um, you know, we're going to talk about more basic things, but a supplement like, um, um, there's liquid magnesium and GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, GABA tea, GABA tea, GABA tea, it, or um, powder can help that one. GABA is something we make naturally, but you know, with screens and things like this, and I'm gonna talk about it, um, if we don't have enough, uh, that's kind of that monkey mind going, and that's a natural thing, but we, I don't take it all the time. It's very, I just take a very little bit if my mind is going, and it's that like kind of worry or anxiety sort of feeling, um, because we make it naturally, and I want my body to keep making it naturally. But um, that can be helpful and I'll, I'll swing back around to that. Uh, but you know, when we get enough sleep, we wake up refreshed, insp inspired, productive. And, um, and when we don't, we aren't. We aren't our best selves. Uh, we know this to be true, right? We can be moody. We can even be like angry and tough to be around. We, we make better decisions. We are really unfocused and kind of foggy when we don't get good sleep. We make better decisions when we do. Uh, we, and I know to be true for myself, when I don't get enough sleep, I have these really crazy car, uh, simple carb cravings. I get cravings like, no, I want a bagel, cream cheese, I want a donut. Like I want that, because your body didn't get enough 
um, sleep to turn into energy. So you're craving the a quick form of energy, which can come out in like those caffeine and sugar cravings. So those like simple carbs. So I know that to be true when I don't get enough sleep. That's that I really get some crazy cravings. Um, and we have a lot of habits that are not conducive, like like in general, right? As a collective, we have a lot of habits that are not necessarily conducive to getting good sleep. Um, so I recommend getting in a pattern around bedtime. So getting in a bedtime routine that signals to the body that it's time to shut down. Whether you read a little bit, I definitely recommend turning the screens off at least an hour before bedtime and start to do, you know, we, there's folks that do a gratitude journal, a little bit of deep breathing exercises or four, seven, eight, something to really signal that it's time to slow down and go into rest mode. Um, and even, you know, a lot of us have screens in our bedrooms. I invite us to bring the screens out. So the computers, the TVs, the phones, leave them out, charge them outside of the bedroom when you sleep. And at the very least, um, you know, it's great if you can get like a little battery powered alarm, but I know some people use their phone as their alarm. Um, if you're getting enough sleep, sometimes uh, there's a lot of us who don't operate with alarms anymore. But if you're using your, if you do need to use your phone as your alarm, at the very least, turn it, switch it to airplane mode so that your phone is not like um, searching to, uh, for the Wi Fi signals and the, you know, um, cell phone signals. So that's something that can disrupt circadian rhythms. And, you know, we have a lot of, with all of our electronics and our, and our routers and things, we have a lot of our Wi-Fi, we have a lot of EMF exposure. So um, at least keeping it out of the bedroom is great. And a Himalayan salt lamp is something that emits, um, emits those negative ions to neutralize the effect of a lot of electronics, which emit positive ions. So it gives the, it, 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 it gives you a little nature, like the feeling of being, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, it went away. Looked at the sun. <laughs> um, that feeling of being at the beach. Oh, our bodies pick up on those signals. Our bodies are affected by those signals. Yes. So, um, it, a little bit here and, you know, a little bit over time can, uh, really disrupt our circadian rhythms and our sleep. Different people are affected different ways. And I invite you to see how um, how you're affected. But we are a generation who is first generation of using cell phones over a period of uh, a lifetime. And so we're kind of an experiment in and of itself, right? We're already seeing this with like cell phone addiction and social media addiction. And that's a different story. But how it affects your health and your sleep um, is yet to be seen really uh, as a as a whole and um, but I have worked with a lot of folks who have really seen a lot of benefit um, just even you know like like relaxing the mind and getting out from behind the screens and this you know a lot of us are busy entrepreneurs building our business we have a habit of working late sometimes when we need to you're doing a launch you're doing this um, but it's as a rule you know there's, there's, there's the exceptions. I know stuff like that happens, but as a rule, trying to uh, just keep the, the screens out of the bedroom is going to help you get greater sleep. Stop caffeine and alcohol close to bedtime. For some people, they have to have a certain temperature in the room. Um, get rid of like the blinking artificial lights. Sometimes like a little nightlight can help if you have to get up um, to go to the bathroom during, during the night. Um, but then if you are getting, so that's the physical, right? And we know that we just feel so much better on, uh, good sleep and we might have, um, we might have, um, dreams, right? We might have dreams. So that's, that is the emotional side coming through. So when you get good sleep, when you get good REM, and I, oh, and I forgot to say, eight hours is a great thing to shoot for. You, only you know wh what kind of sleep 
um, is great for you, but it's great to start. Usually that 10 to 2, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is kind of a sweet spot for us as humans um, to really get good sleep and REM. So if you can go to bed at the same time every night and then let yourself sleep, you can kind of train yourself to see how much sleep you need. If that's not something that's ideal, you know you have to get up at a certain time every day, then go to bed at a different time uh, earlier and earlier to see how much sleep that you do need. Some people need nine hours, some people can get away with six and a half or seven, but usually that eight hours is a good thing to shoot for. Anyway, we also dream at night, right? So dreams, it's great to be aware of your dreams, are, is the emotional coming forth. Most dreams are um, us learning to accept some sort of aspect of ourselves. So it's great to be aware of your dreams and if you know, you're know you not familiar with meanings, you can always like start to look, look them up. Um, but it's really helped me to be aware of my dreams and um, write them out in a journal in the morning. Or just notice them, just take some time to notice what happened and how I felt about it. And then on the spiritual side, sleep can be a time, especially for light workers and energy workers, where we go in, where our spirit goes into the higher realms and helps humanity in whatever way, shape, or form possible, right? We're just helping folks um, on the astral plane. Sorry, the light's moving and grooving with me. Okay, so that's sleep. Let me know what questions. And then, of course, there are supplements to help with uh, sleep. Melatonin, liquid magnesium, GABA uh, can help. And GABA, like, liquid magnesium is especially good on the physical side. GABA is especially good on the mind side. And the other thing I want to talk about is movement. So movement, like I said, two sides of the same coin, uh, is going to... I, we've been talking about this in my group. I have a free support group called Intuitive Eating for Energy. You guys are welcome over there. Um, and I used to be someone who had to like work, work out really hard, really athletic, um, you know, uh, cardio and, and everything, running and soccer and basketball. And I still love sports and I love, um, and I love that sort of thing. Uh, but you don't have to go hard at it every single day to to um, to be fit and healthy. On the flip side, uh, if you're someone who just really does not like working out or exercising, I want to reframe that into what can you do to move your body in a way that is pleasurable and not punishment. So what is fun for you? Brainstorm what is fun for you. And this will help your sleep as well, right? So do you like to dance? Do you like dance parties? There's a million sorts of dance classes out there. There's exercise dance, there's Zumba, there's Masala Bhangra, there's hip hop, there's like all sorts of stuff out there. And even if you can't get out there, right? You can have a dance party in your house. You can have a 10 minute, 15 minute dance party where you just dance it out right? You can stretch, you can do yoga, like you can search YouTube and do some yoga. Um, Qigong, same thing, which is a more gentle way of moving your body. A more mindful exercise, a more yin than yang exercise, right? Hip circles, just stretching, just stretching. Hip circles are great because we carry a lot of tension in our hips. Um, taking the steps, uh, parking further away from the store and walking that distance, you know, in a lot of other cultures outside of the U.S. Um, and even some cities within are really conducive to biking, uh, public transportation, walking, right? And so I used to have this rule, even though it was like kind of 50-50 conducive in South Florida, where I rode my bike um, if it was within five miles. And if it was, um, a, if it was more, I took uh, I took a car. So walking, stuff like that, set an alarm for stretch breaks, especially if you're a desk worker. And um, you can look up, I do the ABCs with my with my toes, with my foot, point my foot. That's a great way to get some stretches in and strengthen your calves. ABE for Fitness is a website by Dr. David Katz, one of my teachers, and he gives a lot of great exercises for desk workers like that you can do in five or eight minute breaks at your desk, two minute breaks at your desk. Okay. <clears throat> 
Yeah, uh, Michelle, no, there's not. Michelle asks, is there a difference between taking magnesium capsules versus liquid magnesium? No, when I said liquid magnesium, I was thinking of liquid magnesium cap capsules. Um, so that just works a little better, and that's great for um, some types of PMS symptoms as well. Magnesium, the, magnesium comes in a few different forms, like you got your typical magnesium, you got your liquid magnesium capsules, and you've got your oxygenated magnesium, um, which can all help in different ways. Uh, oxygenated magnesium helps with, um, helps with digestion and getting impacted matter out of the intestines. Um, but they all have magnesium, and magnesium is a very common deficiency in uh, Western diets. So they'll, whichever form you have will help, but if, you're gonna, if you don't have one at home and you're going to go get one from the store, I would suggest the liquid magnesium capsules. Easy to take. Does that make sense? So that is movement. Move your body in whatever way, shape, or form. Whether you're a big workout person or not, let's just talk about pleasurable body movement. It can be that too, right? You can go have a great intimate session with your partner as well. All right. So, um, guys, I gotta go. <clears throat> I gotta go run and do an intro. We're having a guest speaker in intuitive eating for energy. So I have to go introduce her, but all this and more um, we're going to be talking about in my holistic detox starting January 29th. I'm going to talk more about it uh, at the end of tomorrow's Energy Building Basics, but uh, it is a mind, body, and spirit detox, detoxing you on every level, resetting digestion, and just resetting uh, for us to bring in um, everything that we desire in 2018 and releasing that which no longer serves. A lot of us have been up-leveling right and really stepping into a new way of being, uh, new habits in this new, like, new ways of relating to ourselves and the world. And this, um, and this cleanse is really going to help ground that work into the physical. Michelle says, thanks. I had some at home, but haven't been taking it recently. Awesome. Yeah, that'll totally help with your sleep. All right, I got to run over there, but I love you guys so much. Tell me how you are working in movement into your day, how it affects your sleep, how much sleep you're getting, what kind of quality sleep you're getting, um, and what you're going to do to address that. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow, Friday at noon, back at the regular time, noon, for the final tip in Energy Building Basics. Thanks, Michelle, for joining me. And everyone who watches the replay, love you so much. Have a great one. Bye-bye.